Hey folks, hope you can see me, hope you can hear me. Had some issues with Facebook. Had some issues with Facebook, so I'm gonna try again. Um, my journey to a book contract with Anamkara Books. Thought I would share it because it's been a long journey that started back in 2013. And I thought I would share my story, how I got to this point. In late 2013, I was perusing Amazon looking for a book to read. And I came across a book called Healing the Divide, Recovering Christianity's Mystic Roots by Amos Smith. And it intrigued me. So I began to read this book. And in his book, he talked about um, the Jesus paradox, which is what he referred to as Jesus being God and human at once. And he referred to centering prayer. And that particularly interested me because I had always been attracted to silence. I just didn't know what to do in the silence. And I thought, this is wonderful. I now have found a practice that I can try in the silence. So I began reading his book and I began emailing him on his website and asking him questions about centering prayer and asking him questions about the Jesus paradox. And we continued a lot of back and forth dialogue. And then in 2014, spring of 2014, he could tell that I was very interested and we became friends. And he asked if I wanted to help him with his social media on Facebook and Twitter. So I began doing tweets for him and I began doing Facebook posts for him. And this is really regarding his book, Healing the Divide, Recovering Christianity's Mystic Roots. And then toward the summer of 2014, Amos challenged me and it was sort of a surprise. He said, you need to write a book, Rich. Now I've written this book and this book is, I think it's some three or 400 pages, packed full of information, maybe a little bit more academic and a pretty comprehensive appendix. And he said, why don't you put the Jesus prayer, uh, not the Jesus prayer, the Jesus paradox and centering prayer into your own words. I thought he was crazy at the time. I had never written a book. The idea of writing a book had never crossed my mind. And the most I'd ever written is probably six or seven pages for a, a papers in colleges, in college or high school. So I asked my wife and said, what do you think of that? And she said, sure. So I went back to Amos and said, I'll give it a whirl. So he said, why don't you take a week and think about centering prayer and think about the Jesus paradox and just write sentences as to what they mean to you. So I did that and came back to him and passed it back to him some 13 or 14 sentences that were my thoughts about centering prayer and my thoughts about the Jesus paradox. Jesus, and then Amos said, wonderful, you now have the chapters of your book, go write. Well, I wasn't going to go write 13 or 14 chapters. I was going to write one chapter and pass it to him and see what he thought and see if he thought I even had a skill set to write. So I picked one of the thoughts, wrote the chapter probably over about a two week period and sent it over to him. He read it and said it had an interesting take. He enjoyed it. So that made me feel pretty good. And I decided, well, maybe I really can do this thing, but I need to take this book writing pretty seriously. So what did I do? Pretty much from July 2014 through, probably through a lot of 2018, every Saturday morning, I would get up at about 5.30 a.m., jump in my car, put my baseball hat on, and head to the local Starbucks because the local Starbucks is opened at 6 a.m., get a cup of coffee, pull out my laptop, and begin to type and begin to write the book. And that's how the book got written over a three and a half, four year period. It got written mostly in Starbucks on Saturday morning from six to nine, six to 10. I didn't want to take time away from the family. I wanted to be able to spend the weekends with the family and I wanted to spend you know, Saturday with the family. So that's how the book got written. And by the time I would get home you know, at 9.30 or 10 o'clock on Saturday, everybody was up and going and we would just do our, our activities. So that's how the book got written. But it's great to have a mentor. Amos had written one book and, and, and was in the midst of writing a second book. And he put my book into kind of a template that would be more presentable for uh, publishers. And then that went back and forth between Amos and I to fine tune it to where it needed to be. But then Amos continued to teach me the process, you know, that you need people to endorse your book. So I began crafting emails to reach out to different authors and contemplatives in this space to ask them if they would consider endorsing my book. And then if they said yes, I would send them a copy of the manuscript so that they could um, endorse it. 
and I would give them five week, six week window, asking them if they could get back to me in a six week window. So Amos taught me that process. Obviously, we needed a forward for the book, and we needed an afterward. So I crafted emails to kind of more prominent people that would make sense for forwards and for afterwards and did multiple emails to different people to try to pique people's interest to write a forward and to write an afterward. Um, but then really where it landed was the forward um, was written by Father Carl Enrico, who was really the, one of the founding members of the Contemplative Outreach. I thought, what a more perfect person to write a book on Centering Prayer than um, Father Carl, as he's known, who has his own book called The Taste of Silence, but he's um, an expert at Centering Prayer, and he would be perfect for the forward, and he was delighted when I reached out to him, and he did write the forward, and then Amos actually ended up writing the, the afterword for my book. But then you're not done. You, ha you have your book, you have your forward, you have your afterword, you have your endorsements, or they're called blurbs. They generally go, I guess, on the back cover of your book or sometimes on the inside of your book as well before you begin reading the, the chapters. But then you're not done. You need to submit it to publishers. And publishers have different criteria, so you need to go to their website and see what their criteria is to submit to them. Some of them want a query letter, which is really a letter telling them why they should pu publish your book, along with a book proposal. And a book proposal is a huge document, and that took me about four weeks to write again on Saturday mornings, and Amos shared a template with me. But in this document, a book proposal, you know, it's your book, it's the chapters of your book, a table of contents. It's kind of a one paragraph summary of each chapter. It's who your audience is, how you'll market the book. It includes your two best chapters. And then of course it includes your blurbs or endorsements and it includes your forward and afterward in it. So it's really the whole package. So as you can, matter, can, can realize that took me four weeks or so to write and back and forth to get it where it needed to be so it was presentable. And I began sending that and query letters to publishers and waiting and seeing what was happened. And then I did get a response from a publisher in March of 2019 who indicated they wanted to move forward with publishing my book in spring of 2020. So I was delighted. And I went back and forth with them a little bit, never got a contract, but went back and forth answering many of their questions as 2020 approached. And then COVID-19 happened. And I think that had an impact on their business and I didn't I started not hearing from them, and I started noticing that I didn't see any books published by them this year. And I thought, if I really want to publish my book, I'm going to have to <laughs> get out there again. So one thing I'll say is do not quit. You wrote a book. You have an important message you want to share with people. Do not quit. And I was resolved not to quit. And I began reaching out to publishers again with my query letter, with my book proposal. And lo and behold, Anamkara books responded and told me within one week that they loved the book and they wanted to send me a contract. And they did. And I signed a contract on May 17th, sent them back the contract, sent them my full manuscript with a target release date for the book to be published in mid-summer 2020. So the main point I have for you is don't ever quit. This book was something that was extremely important to me that I wanted to do. And along the way, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. You just need to keep moving forward and never, never give up. Another thing I'll mention is I could never have done this alone. Um, Amos mentored me through the entire process of writing the book and how to write a book and how to put it in a presentable format for a publisher and how to edit a book and how to get blurbs or endorsements, and how to reach out to people to do a forward or afterward, and how to create a query letter for publishers, and how to put together a book proposal. So I could never have done this without his help. And I could never have done it without the help of the people that are endorsing the book. And the people that are endorsing the book are other people in the field that have written books and are many steps ahead of me. Um, Felina Huertz, Christina Walters Painter, Paul R. Smith, J. Brent Bill, Nicholas Amato, Daniel Coleman, Rebecca Santage, Dr. Philip Romain, and Reverend Dr. Deborah Spink all provided endorsements for my book. So this is a book that I could never have done by myself 
I needed the help of those people. I needed the help of Amos Smith, and I needed my wife and family support um, as I wrote this book. So that's how I got to this point, and that's how I got to a signed contract on May 17th of 2020. But the work is not done, obviously, because when, as the book comes out, there'll be pre-launch, and there'll be launch, and there'll be post-launch activities, and there'll be all the back and forth that I'll have to do with the editor at the publishing house. So I thought I would jump on and just share how I stumbled into writing a book, the process to signing a contract, and here I am, now kind of in wait mode, waiting for the editor to give me a timeline and share with me what things they want me to do regarding the book as we approach publication in mid-summer 2020. So thanks for listening, and for those of you that are considering um, writing a book for a first time, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to share my experiences with you. And again, I'll just keep saying, never, never give up. Write your book, your message is important, People need to hear it. You, you cheat the world when you don't share your message um, with the world. So thanks for listening. And I think what I'll do is, as my journey continues to publication, I'll continue to share my story along the way. So thanks for listening. Hope everybody has a great, great Saturday. Um, much love to all of you.